This lesson is for Advanced Algebra, Lesson 8.3 on Properties of Inverses. In Lesson 8.2 we learned how to find an inverse. Let's review how to do that. To find an inverse you switch x and y. To check to see if you found the correct inverse function, you're going to today do the composite of the function and its inverse, and you're going to do that in both directions, and the result should be x. So today you're going to be working with inverses and composites. So it's a combination of 8, 1 and 8, 2 put together. In symbol form, what's going to be happening is f goes into g, g goes into f, and in both cases you're going to get x as your result. If that's indeed what happens, that proves to you, or proves in general, that f and g are inverses of each other. So let's try it with a bunch of examples. Let's say you have the function f of x and it equals 1 half x minus 3. First thing, find the inverse. So I'm going to take f of x, and the, because it's in function form, the first thing I'm going to do is replace f of x with the letter y. Now I'm going to use what my knowledge of inverses. To find an inverse of this, I should switch x and y around. Now I'm going to solve for y. To do that, I'm going to add 3 to both sides, and then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. When I do that, I need to make sure that I put x plus 3 in parentheses. So when I do that, I get 2x plus 6. So I did 2 times x, 2 times 3. Now make sure that you rewrite that now in the proper symbols. So my final answer then is going to be 2x plus 6 equals f inverse of x. So there's my final answer. Now I'm going to do follow-up questions. I'm going to find f following f of x excuse me, f following f inverse, and then I'm going to do that again in reverse order, f inverse following f. So let's do this one first. The way that this is written, I've got f following the inverse, so I'm going to plug the inverse into the original. So I focus on what the original looks like. The original looks like 1 half times x minus 3. In the blank space, I'm going to put the inverse, which is 2x plus 6. Now I'm going to simplify by doing the distributive property. 1 half times 2x is simply x. 1 half times 6 is going to be 3. As soon as I've done the distributive property, those parentheses drop. I still have a minus 3 to do, and look what happens. I end up with just x, which is what I was looking for. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but now in reverse. I'm going to plug f into the inverse. So I focus on what the inverse looks like. The inverse looks like 2 times something, or 2 times x, plus 6. In the blank space, I'm going to put the function f, which is 1 half x minus 3. Now I'm going to do the distributive property to undo those parentheses. 2 times a half x is simply going to be an x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Parentheses drop and then I still have a plus 6, so again I end up with x. So that means I proved by showing all of those steps that this is indeed the inverse of f of x. So I want students to give it a try now with a brand new equation. Take g of x, which is equal to 1 third x plus 5, find its inverse, and then do the composition of g with its inverse and its inverse with g in both directions. Pause the video and give that a try. So here's your answers. First I took g, replaced g of x with the letter y, switched x and y, and I solved for y. Once I got y alone, then I rewrote it with g inverse as its name. So I ended up with 3x minus 15. First I plugged, now I'm going to check and see if I found the correct inverse by plugging g into its inverse. So I focus on what the inverse looks like. It looks like 3 times something minus 15. 3 times something minus 15. In the something location, I put all of g. 
and g was 1 half x plus 5 originally. Now when I do the distributive property here, I get 3 times a third, which is x, 3 times 5, which is 15, minus the 15 that was there gives me just x. Make sure you do it in the other order, so we're going to plug the inverse into g. Focus on what g looks like, 1 third times x plus 5. In that x position, I'm going to put the inverse equation, 3x minus 15. When I do the distributive property, I get x minus 5 plus the 5 that was there gives me just x. And students, if you're struggling with that, know that we're going to be doing a lot of practice questions, so you'll get better at these as you progress. A couple other examples that I want to do with you. Sometimes they'll give you two equations or two functions and they'll say, are they inverses of each other? It's important that you verify that in both directions. Rather than finding the inverse of these, I want you to compose them in both directions. So first I'm going to check by doing p following q and I'm going to do q following p. If I get x in both instances, then that proves that they are inverses of each other. So on the first one here, when I do p following q, that means I'm going to plug q into p. p looks like 1 half times x plus 3. In the blank space, I'm going to put function q, which is 2x plus 6. So when I do the distributive property there, I get 1 half times 2x, which is just going to be x. 1 half times 6 is 3. When I add 3 to that, I get x plus 6. Now, if those were inverses of each other, I should have gotten an x, not an x plus 3. So I'm going to stop here. I'm not even going to verify the other one. I'm going to say that I know the answer. Are p and q inverses? No, they are not. If they were inverses, I would have gotten just an x here instead of an x plus 6. If I did get an x here, I would still need to verify p going into q. And if I got an x, I would have said yes. One last type of question you might run into. Is the inverse of f a function? If so, find the rule or the equation for f inverse. So there's a couple different ways you can handle this one. Since it's asking us about the inverse and they give us the original, what I would do is the HLT, horizontal line test. So let's graph 5x. When you don't know how to graph or if you're using only a baby calculator, just come up with some values for x, make a table, and then just graph your coordinates. If x is negative 2, then f of x is going to be negative 10. If x is negative 1, you're going to get negative 5, and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that now, and then I'm going to do the HLT on whatever I get. Negative 2, negative 10, which I don't have room for, so I'm going to skip that one. Negative 1, negative 5, Zero, zero, one, five. And so here's my graph. And let's see if it passes the horizontal line test. Anywhere that I draw a horizontal line, it'll only hit that graph that I just drew one time. So I'm going to say, is the inverse of f a function? I'm going to say yes. The reason it passes the HLT or the horizontal line test. Remember that you always do the horizontal line test on the original function. So since I said yes, I need to go ahead and find what the rule is for the inverse. So let's go ahead and do that. So the original function is f of x equals 5x. I'm going to first insert the letter y in place of f of x. In place of f of x. Then I'm going to switch x and y around. Now I'm going to solve for y. To solve for y, I would need to divide by 5. And then just go ahead and simply rename it, since we know that the graph of the inverse is indeed a function. So I'm going to say x over 5 equals f inverse of x. And one final item for the lesson is the power function inverse theorem sounds a lot more intimidating than it actually is. When you're working with x to a power and x to its inverse power of 1 over n, um, they are inverses of each other but only when you're dealing with non-negative real numbers. So we're talking about positive numbers here. 
Why is that? Here it is visually. So here's your power function. Obviously this power is an even number because we have a parabolic shaped graph. If you reflect that graph over the line y equals x to find its inverse, you end up with this green one here. Notice that the green one would not pass the vertical line test. So the green one is not a function. So what we do is we restrict that power function to only be the positive numbers, the numbers that are in quadrant one. Then when you flip that over the line y equals x to get its inverse, now the green graph, the inverse graph, does indeed pass the vertical line test. So I got this information in your book from page 532. You can read about these further.